Avalaka, the demon. Avalaka lived near the city of Alavi and feasted on human flesh. He was so fierce, powerful and crafty that he was known as the demon. One day the king of Alavi went hunting for deer in the jungle and Alavi caught him. The king begged to be released but in return for but in return for his freedom the demon made a deal that he had to sp send one person every day into the jungle as an offering to Avalaka. The king, afraid for his own life, agreed. Every day after th that a prisoner would be sent from the palace dungeons into the forest with a plate of rice. The wretched soul was told that to gain freedom he had to go to a certain tree, leave the plate there, and then he could go as he pleased. At first many prisoners volunteered to go on that simple mission. But, but as the days went by and no one returned to tell the other prisoners what had happened, the prisoners soon grew suspicious and had to be forced each day to go into the forest. Soon the prisons became empty. How was the king to fulfill his promise of sending a person each day to be eaten by the demon? His minister advised him to drop uh, packages of gold in the streets, and those who found picking up the packages would be caught as thieves and sent to Avalaka. When the word got around, nobody dared to collect the packages. As a last resort, the king started catching children for offering. The terrified families of the city began to flee, leaving the streets deserted and the king completely desperate. There was no more there was only one more boy left, and he was the king's son. With much reluctance the king ordered that the prince be sent to Avalaka the following morning. That day the Buddha happened to be near the city. When he surveyed the world with his divine eye that morning, he saw what was going to happen. Out of compassion for the king, the prince and Avalaka the Buddha traveled the whole day to the demon's cave, and in the evening he arrived at the entrance. The demon was away in the mountains, and the Buddha asked the gatekeeper if he could spend a night in the cave. When the gatekeeper left to inform his master about the request, the Buddha went into the cave, sat on the seat of the demon, and taught the Dharma to his wives. When the demon heard what was happening, he hurried home, very angry. With his extraordinary power, he created a terrifying thunderstorm, which shook and rattled the forest with thunder, lightning, wind and rain. But the Buddha was unafraid. Avalaka then attacked the Buddha by throwing his spear and club at him, but before the weapons could touch him, they fell at the feet of the Blessed One. Unable to frighten the Buddha, Avalaka asked, Is it right that you, a holy man, should enter and sit amongst a man's wives when the owner of the house is away? At this, the Buddha got up to leave the cave. Avalaka thought, What a fool I am to have wasted my energy trying to frighten this ascetic. So he asked the Buddha to enter the cave again. The demon ordered the Buddha three times to get out and three times to enter the cave, in the hope that he could kill the Buddha with fatigue. Each time the Buddha did as he was ordered, but when the demon asked the Buddha to leave for a fourth time, the Buddha refused to do so, saying, I am not going to obey you, Avalaka. Do whatever you can, but I am going to remain here. Unable to force the Buddha to do what he wanted, Avalaka changed his tactics and said, I will ask you some questions. If you can't answer, I will split your heart, kill you, and throw you over to the uh, other side of the river. The Buddha then said, Well, friend, I do not see anyone in the world of Devas, Maras, 
Brahmas or among the generation of recluses, Brahmanas, deities and humans who could either confound my mind or cleave my heart or take me by the feet and fling me over to the other side over to the further shore of the ocean nevertheless friend I will ask what you will Avalaka uh, then addressed the blessed one in a verse what wealth is there what wealth here is best for man what will practice will happiness bring what taste excels all other tastes how lived is the life they say is best the Buddha answered faith is the faith is the wealth here best for man Dhamma will practice shall happiness bring truth indeed all other tastes excels life wisely lived they say is best Avalaka asked how does one the currents cross how is oceans existence crossed how is one suffering quelled how is one purified and the Buddha answered by conviction are the currents crossed by diligence is the ocean crossed by effort is one suffering quelled and by wisdom is one purified Avalaka asked how does one wisdom win how does one wealth obtain how does one come to fame how does one friendship win? How does one without sorrow fare when from this world to another he is gone? The Buddha answered, The mindful and discerning one who in the Dhamma plead his faith, by this will to, by his will to hear that Dhamma wins the wisdom of Nibbana. Who is tactful and energetic and gains wealth by his own effort fame will he acquire by truth and friendship by his giving he who has faith is also truthful virtuous firm and fond of giving by virtue of these four conditions will never in the hereafter grieve truth and restraint charity and forbearance are the great reformers of man if there be any better ask of other shamanas and brahmanas if there be any better ask of other sh shamanas and brahmanas avalaka replied why should i now try to ask from other shamanas and brahmanas when I, when this day i came to learn what wheel is here and hereafter this is for my will indeed. The Buddha to Allah became. A gift always bears fruit. This too I learned today. From village to village and town to town I shall wander along praising that supreme Buddha and the Dhamma will preached by him. Having thus spoken, Avalaka said to the Blessed One, Most excellent, O Gotama, is thy teaching most excellent just as a man would set upright what is overturned re reveal what is concealed point out the way to one who gone astray bring an oil lamp into the darkness so that those with eyes could see objects even so the Dhamma has been declared in the men in many a manner by the venerable Gotama I take refuge in the venerable Gotama the Buddha, in the Dharma and in the Sangha, the order. May the venerable Gotama accept me as a disciple who has taken refuge from this day forth while life lasts.
next morning, when the officers of Alavi came with the king's young son, they were surprised at the sight of the Buddha preaching to Avalakka, who was listening attentively to the sermon. The bo when the boy was handed to Avalakka, he grew ashamed of what ha he had. He grew ashamed of what he had been. Instead of seeing the boy as an offering, he stroked the boy on the head, kissed him, and handed him back to the officers. After that, the Buddha blessed the child and Avalakka. Indeed, the conversion of Avalakka the cannibal showed how the Buddha, with his great wisdom and compassion, could tame a savage and change him into a gentle disciple. And that was the Avalakka Sutta, the discourse to Avalakka. Thank you so much for listening, and may you find true peace, happiness, and freedom from suffering. Thank you.